Hey everyone, this is the video about how I do brace in aluminum roll cage of my project I'm currently working on. Basically I've decided to make this video and describe some steps and mistakes I do during the brace. So now I'm going to make supports for the rear section of the roll cage like so, so it will have a triangle shape. To do so I will need to make measurements first. Knowing the length of the road, uh, I can make a cut now. So yeah, cutting. So the first is done uh, and uh, I need to make one more. By doing symmetrical supports I try to make uh, their length uh, identical to each other. Even if I screw up uh, a bit with one length, uh, I make the same length for another uh, rod anyway. At the next step I usually clean up the rod ends basically to get rid of the aluminum coating which protects it uh, from being oxidated. And to make it simple uh, I use a drill for that uh, to simplify the action just like so. And now, when the rods are sanded down on both ends, I am starting to feed them up on the cage to measure angles the rod will be applied to. And since the joint will be done upon another crudely road, I am using this kind of rasp. So I'm trying to figure out how the angle I've just made fits to the cage from the first attempt and usually it does not uh, fit right away so I need a few more moves to make it right. So this is how I do the fitting of the rod. Now this side uh, looks okay for now. And so here it is, the first finished road with the, uh, with, uh, which fits correctly into the target position. So now I just need to make another one which is symmetrical to the first one. And here them both are done and uh, you can clearly see how do they fit in the cage right now. The next step is to send down the spots of the cage itself where the rods uh, will be braced to. And since uh, I cannot do it right with the drill right now, I will just use a rasp in a basic way. <laughs> Uh, yeah, just like so. Now I've done with uh, sending down the target spots for brazing. It's quite important step uh, of the whole process because uh, if I don't do that, no matter how good I am in soldering or how good I've made other steps before, it just won't won't work. It won't brace at all without 
proper cleaning the rods and the spots uh, where the rods will be applied. And even if there was a soldering action done before uh, on the same rod, uh, I still need to clean up the surface uh, because aluminum will be covered with uh, some oxidated coat anyway. Now when all is done with preparing the rods and sending, uh, I'll just move on the actual grazing. Sorry for moving the camera angle, but I had to relocate the, uh, to another table because in the day before I made a mistake by using playing gun right about the rubber surface, so I just uh, burned it a little bit. So how am I doing the brace itself? I start with preparing the solder volume using this castellin rod, alternative uh, of HTS 2000, as it was said to me. I just don't know exactly, actually. Um, I won't need much of it, uh, so I will just cut a small piece that will be really needed. After it's done, here goes the following stuff. Um, here is the can of butane gas and the torch that goes uh, upon it. This, this torch actually has a fa uh, faucet that controls uh, gas flow which makes it uh, blow less or more and a trigger which with a spark so it works this way get the torch upon the can open the faucet a little bit then pull the trigger and to make it burn now when torch is set up I use this, this piercer tool to be able to handle the volume of solder material. Uh, in other words, it's the most convenient way to me to use it when uh, I do brace. After all is set up uh, and, I'm, and I'm ready to start up heating the roads, I use this mask, kind of respirator to protect myself from some vapor that goes from the solder material. Actually, I don't really know whether that kind of respirator is enough, uh, but uh, I've noticed that I feel better uh, when it's on than without it. Well, Anyway, I tried to braise without it and it stinks pretty darn much, so I don't braise without it. So finally it goes the fire. that went not so well, mostly because it did not wait until surface is will be hot enough before tipping it with the solder material and the flux that goes with this solder just vanished before it could be applied to the surface. So this solder material did not stick properly, so I'll need to get it another try.
And finally it's been done and the rods are on the new place. One more thing I'd like to know that when there are more than just two rods going to, to be braced together, there is a chance that uh, it might melt the previous joint down. It should not bother you if you, you only the rods ain't fix it on the other end. This time I had each one of them fix it on their on the other uh, ends, uh, so it did not bother me uh, that much. But in a few days before, when I was going through the um, starting the process, uh, I had to use some uh, steel wire to fix the rods on their position and hold them still. Uh, but uh, if you work with the cage which already has a form and the rods are on their places and you just put uh, uh, the rods inside that cage uh, it actually doesn't uh, bother you and uh, should not so it's not a big problem just make sure uh, each rod has a fixed position and one more thing, one more important thing, uh, as I noticed, uh, that when you locate the rod at the some position, do not force it to, because if there will be a tension between rods uh, when you brace them, it could affect on a complete failure at the end when you apply the heat uh, on the other point. So basically, make the rod stay freely on its positions and before you start brazing. Uh, well, I guess that would be it about this process. It worth to mention that I'm not a pro in soldering. Uh, it's actually my first project when I start to brace and learning along the way. Hope that was helpful to you guys. Thanks for watching and bye.